Hey, welcome to day six. And today we are um, breaking open the part of the litany where it says, Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. So let's start with the unity prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. O oh, Blessed Lady, spread the effective grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And come, Holy Spirit, send down those beams which swiftly flow in silent streams from thy bright throne above. O come, thou Father of the poor, O come, thou source of all our store, come fill our hearts with love. O thou of comforters the best, O thou the soul's delightful guest, the pilgrim's sweet relief, rest art thou in our toil, most sweet refreshment in the noonday heat, and solace in our grief. O blessed light of life thou art, Fill with thy light the inmost heart of those who hope in thee. Without thy Godhead, nothing can have any price or worth in man. Nothing can harmless be. Lord, wash our sinful stains away. Refresh from heaven our barren clay. Our wounds and bruises heal. To thy sweet yoke our stiff necks bow. Warm with thy fire of hearts of snow. Um, warm with thy fire our hearts of snow and our wandering feet recall. Grant to thy faithful, dearest Lord, whose only hope is thy sure word, the sevenfold gifts of grace. Grant us in life thy grace that we in peace may die and ever be in joy before thy face. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we open with a quote from St. Peter Julian. St. Joseph is head of the Holy Family, Father of the Trinity on earth, which resembles so closely to the Holy Trinity on high. Today is going to be deep um, when it comes to the Holy Trinity. So um, I, I wouldn't get uh, too wrapped up in the language or too wrapped up if you're reading this and you just go, I just don't get it today. <laughs> just read it. Let it kind of ponder in your heart and just kind of sit in it. And the Holy Spirit will reveal to you what's the most important for you in the moment. I will do my very best to explain um, maybe how I understand things. But even then, I don't think we'll ever fully understand the Holy Trinity. So we'll just ask for the intercession of St. Augustine and the intercession of all the doctors of the church who have had a beautiful encounter with uh, the Holy Trinity to pray for us as we meditate on these words. The Holy Trinity is a family, a holy family. They want you to be a member of their family. To make this happen, they have to establish a Trinitarian replica on earth, an earthly Trinity, right? We're visual people. God knows this. He's like, let me give you an example, okay? He doesn't just say, this is what you need to do. He always says, this is what you need to do. But here, here's an example. The Trinity on earth consists of Jesus, Mary, and St. Joseph. In a sense, they are the first church. Membership in this family will prepare you for membership in God's eternal family in heaven. St. Joseph is the father of the Trinity on earth. Many saints have compared the earthly trinity, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, to the heavenly trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the comparison has its limitations, of course, right? Because God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit are all divine love, right? It's perfect love, divine love. Um, and then you have Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, and you have two humans thrown into the loop. Now, one, you've got Mary, who was without original sin, and I'm sure she was able to love in a way that we, um, because we do have original sin, we can only um, get to that level if God graces us with it. Um, most of us will never reach that point here on earth. 
And then you have Jesus, who's human and divine. And then you've got St. Joseph, who's just fully human. So it's not a comparison like um, they're both divinity side by side. It's just the triangular um, kind of structure to show you the flow of that Trinitarian love, right? The love that the Father has for the Son and that the Son has for the Father that manifests to become in the Holy Spirit and this forever love that just never ends, the perfect family to be this example of this Trinitarian love is the Holy Family. Nonetheless, the comparison is important because it teaches us something about God's Trinitarian family. St. Francis de Sales offers a great insight on this subject. He even writes an entire homily. Um, you can go back and read some of St. Francis de Sales' homilies, and they're quite beautiful. Um, he just, I think if you watch Father Calloway's video, he's like, I just didn't have space in the book. <laughs> I'm sure if there was more he could have shoved in here, he would have. But maybe he needs to make a, a, you know, like a complimentary. You know how they'll make complimentaries for this gospel or that gospel? Maybe he should do a consecration to St. Joseph complimentary additional features. So, there is no doubt at all that St. Joseph was endowed with all gifts and graces required by the charge which the Eternal Father willed to commit to him over all the domestic and temporal concerns of our Lord and the guidance of his family, which was composed of three persons only, representing to us the mystery of the most holy and adorable Trinity. Not that there is any real comparison in this matter, excepting as regards our Lord, who is one of the persons of the Most Blessed Trinity, for the others were but creatures. Yet still we may say that it was a trinity on earth representing, representing in some sort the Most Holy Trinity. St. Francis de Sales teaches us a very important truth in this statement. He beautifully articulates that the Trinity of Nazareth, which is Jesus, Mary, and St. Joseph, represents the heavenly trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and therefore consisted only of three persons. In other words, um, Father Calloway goes into more depth on the video, but Jesus didn't have brothers and sisters. Um, he didn't have any biological brothers or sisters. He had plenty of cousins, and back in those days, there wasn't any language or words for cousin, so everybody was your brother or sister. Um, when you were speaking or writing or documenting, you know, someone else. But that's why they were like, this person's son of this, this person's son of that, so that you knew it wasn't a biological brother, but it was a cousin or a family, um, you know, it was a family member, but it wasn't a brother or a sister specifically to Jesus. And we do hear that a lot in the church. You may have heard it that <clears throat> Mary and Joseph had a normal marriage after Jesus and had other biological children, but that's not true. Um, so just in case you have heard that, you can flush that from your memory space because that's not true, and the church does not teach that. This is what the Catholic Church has always taught, that there is only three persons, and that is Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, or Jesus, Mary, and St. Joseph. But the church has always taught that the Trinity in heaven and the Trinity on earth want you to be a member of their family through adoption. Let's be clear, though. You're never going to become a divine person. You and I are not God, and we never will be. God does, however, want to bring us into the familial life of his triune Godhead through spiritual adoption. Um, so this is kind of like in, an, in a foster child and they go with a family in hopes of finding a forever family, right? Or if you're adopting a pet, you're looking for a forever home. This is our forever home. This is our spiritual forever home. So the family unit is always going to be Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. But he adopts us into this family. So that family can hold all of us because that's our forever home if that will kind of help you with the visual. This happens when we're baptized. As members of the mystical body of Christ, the church, we are made members of God's family on earth, the Holy Family. Membership into the Holy Family on earth prepares us 
to enter the Holy Family in heaven. If you want to be a member of the Trinitarian family in heaven, you need to be a child of St. Joseph on earth. St. Joseph, your spiritual father, will help you become a true child of the Heavenly Father. St. Joseph will teach you how to love, how to pray, make sacrifice, and work. He will teach you how to do the will of God. The pathway to heaven is paved with virtues, and St. Joseph will give you a father's example of holiness. With his holy example and his assistance, your transition to the Trinity in heaven will be an easy one. That's why he's like the patron saint of a happy death, right? Um, because he makes these transitions a, a lot easier for us. Membership into the family of Nazareth, accepting St. Joseph as your father, Mary as your mother, and Jesus as your brother, is the surest, easiest, and quickest way of becoming a member of the Trinitarian family in heaven. Blessed William Joseph says, what an honor it was for St. Joseph to enter into an alliance with the family of the Heavenly Father to become the third person of the created Trinity. And now it wants us to go to page 83 for continued reading. This one wasn't that long, so I'm going to read it to you and maybe that'll help you um, save some time. But this one's really cool. Um, he talks today he's going into St. Joseph's oratory and this is a shrine up in Montreal, Canada. And he goes into a lot more shrines in the back of the book. He lists some. And if you have any stories where you vis have visited a shrine of St. Joseph, not just a St. Joseph church. We actually have a St. Joseph right here in the Dallas Diocese um, in Richardson. And it's quite a beautiful church. If you've never been to that parish, it's a diverse parish. They have great masses. Um, and maybe all of us can kind of pop in there between um, now and before the end of our 33 journey here just to go and um, just say thanks St. Joseph he's their patron so this one opens up with a couple of quotes and he's going to tell the story of St. Joseph's or oratory uh, the first one is St. Gertrude the Great I saw heaven open and St. Joseph sitting upon a magnificent throne I felt myself wonderfully affected when each time his name was mentioned, all the saints made a profound inclination toward him, showing by the serenity and sweetness of their looks that they rejoiced with him on account of his exalted dignity. Um, you know, it makes me think of, you just know when you're in the presence of a holy person, right? Like they just walk through the room and the whole room just changes. Well, this is like the moment his name was mentioned. Everybody just kind of not looked and just had that, yes, St. Joseph, yes. St. Andre, I have only my great devotion to St. Joseph. This is the God, this is, this it is that guides me and gives me full confidence. So saints are heroes. Yes, they are. They are the heroes that we should be watching on movies. <laughs> Every hero deserves a place of honor, and this is especially true for St. Joseph. He's the greatest saint and the greatest hero. He deserves a basilica in his honor. The reality is that there are many shrines around the world dedicated to St. Joseph, and that page is 283 if you go look at the list. He's got a really short list. There's a lot more than this, but he gives us a good starting point and there's some like really not that far from us if you want to do some summer trips there's one in um i believe in st louis missouri there's an, a shrine up that way but this one he wants to mention a little more in depth is in montreal canada st joseph's oratory is a basilica and is widely acclaimed as the preeminent international center of devotion to st joseph preeminent st joseph's Oratory was founded by St. André Basset. This incredible saint was born near Montreal in 1845. His birth name was Alfred, and his parents were devout Catholics. He was number eight of 12 children. Woo! That's a Trinitarian family right there. Years later, when he entered religious life, he took the name André. Alfred's father was a lumberjack by trade. Tragically, his father died after a tree fell on him, when Alfred was only nine years old. Two years later, Alfred's mom died from tuberculosis. So Alfred became an orphan at the age of 12. 
losing both his father and mother at such an early age, Alfred developed a strong devotion to St. Joseph and entrusted his life entirely to him. Alfred never had good health and never received much of an education either. As a young man, he moved to the United States for work and spent time in Connecticut working in several textile mills. After a period of time, Alfred entered the Congregation of the Holy Cross and became a lay brother, but he never became a priest due to the lack of his education. Brother Andre was given the menial task of porter, which is basically a doorman, okay? Um, so he was the doorman of a college run by his religious community in Quebec. He remained in that role for more than 40 years. He was such a humble man that he often referred to himself as St. Joseph's little dog. God had big plans for him, though. Though a humble doorkeeper, Brother Andre quickly became known all throughout Canada as a very holy and pious man. He spent countless hours praying with the people who came to the door to see him. He offered everyone devotional oil, and he collected from the lamp beside the saint statue or the statue of Saint Joseph. Um, he would go and he would collect little vials of oil, and he would give these to people, and he would recommend that they take all their needs to Saint Joseph. Countless miracles were worked through Brother Andre's intercession, but he always attributed the miracles to the loving intercession of St. Joseph. Brother Andre was frequently mocked and ridiculed for his simple love of St. Joseph, his simple piety, and his devotion. Sadly, even members of the church expressed their dislike of him, especially the attention he gave to every sick person who came to him. Many members of the church became jealous of Brother Andre, because many people considered him a saint. On average, Brother Andre received more than 80,000 letters a year from people asking him for prayers. The letters were so numerous that he required four helpers to assist him with all of the mail. The wisdom contained in his correspondence was always simple and straightforward. Go to St. Joseph. He's got a quote here. When you invoke St. Joseph, you don't have to speak much. You know your Father in Heaven knows what you need. Well, so does your friend St. Joseph. Tell him, if you were in my place, St. Joseph, what would you do? In thanksgiving for all the wonders taking place through the intercession of St. Joseph, Brother Andre desired to establish a shrine in Otter. He was given permission by his religious superiors for the project and with the help of others, a small chapel dedicated to St. Joseph was erected in 1904. In 1924, construction of a basilica began on the site where he built his small little chapel. This basilica was completed in 1967 and come to be known throughout the world as St. Joseph's Oratory, the largest shrine in the world dedicated to St. Joseph. Unfortunately, St. Andrew did not live to see the completion of the basilica. He died in 1937 at the age of 91. Woo! That is a good, full life. However, for his efforts to spread devotion to St. Joseph, he is known throughout the world as the greatest apostle of St. Joseph of the 20th century. He was so loved and respected for more than one million people passed by his open coffin before his funeral mass took place. He was beatified by St. John Paul the Great in 1982 and canonized by Pope Benedict the 16th in 2010. So he's a modern saint. Like we really need to connect with him. He He's someone that's just like in touching distance, right? He's in our recent history. On the universal liturgical calendar, St. Andre's feast day, it's on January 6th, but in Canada, they celebrate it on January 7th because January 6th is what day, Miss Liz? It's Ernie's birthday, but it's also the Epiphany. And the Solemnity of the Epiphany always takes precedence over any feast day. So um, maybe that's something we can start doing um, is have a personal devotion to honor St. Um, Saint Andre on January 7th. Today, more than 2 million people visit the St. Joseph's Oratory annually. People travel on pilgrim pilgrimages to the oratory from all over the world, asking for special graces through the intercession of St. Joseph and St. Andre. Whether 
They pray for health, assistance with difficult marriages, the conversion of wayward children, or other matters that weigh on the human heart. All who visit the Basilica find peace, hope, and consolation through St. Joseph. The earthly remains of St. Andre are reserved at the Basilica in a special reliquary, reliquary. A special container uh, contains his heart. <laughs> These are really fancy words. It's sure it's a beautiful box. <laughs> Has his heart. In 1984, uh, St. John Paul the Great journeyed to St. Joseph's Oratory as a pilgrim while on a papal visit to Canada. Before the tomb of St. Andre, the saintly Pope poured out his heart to St. Andre and St. Joseph. Below is a section of from St. John Paul's beautiful prayer, prayer offered on that occasion. And it says, Blessed brother, and now saint, right? Blessed St. Andre, porter of the college and custodian of the oratory of St. Joseph, give hope to all those who continue to seek your help. Teach them confidence in the virtue of prayer and with it the path of conversion and the sacraments. Through you and through St. Joseph, may God continue to pour out his blessings. Amen. That's beautiful. And that, that's it. So, you know, again, I think once you get the jive of how this book works and the flipping and the back and the forth, it's not as scary as it was on day one and day two. So I do want to close with a page. 240. Page 240 with a prayer from the back of the book. And this one is from Prayer of St. Louis de Montfort. So, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail St. Joseph the Just. Wisdom is with you. Blessed are you among all men, and blessed is Jesus, the fruit of Mary, your faithful spouse. Holy Joseph, worthy father, foster father of Jesus Christ, pray for us sinners, and obtain divine wisdom for us from God, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, all this left the litany. If you want to do that on your own, go ahead. But I'm going to go ahead and just do it at the close of the video. We've got a few minutes, and that way, if you want to get it all done at the same time, we'll do it together, okay? Um, but if you got to go, I'll see you tomorrow. All right, well, let's close round two with Litany of the Saint Joseph. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, hear us. Christ graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Noble offspring of David, pray for us. Light of patriarchs, pray for us. Spouse of the Mother of God, pray for us. Guardian of the Redeemer, pray for us. Chase Guardian of the Virgin, pray for us. Father, Foster Father of the Son of God, pray for us. Zealous Defender of Christ, pray for us. Servant of Christ, pray for us. Minister of Salvation, pray for us. Head of the Holy Family, pray for us. Joseph Most Just, pray for us. Joseph Most Chaste, pray for us. Joseph most prudent, pray for us. Joseph most courageous, pray for us. Joseph most obedient, pray for us. Joseph most faithful, pray for us. Mirror of patience, pray for us. Lover of poverty, pray for us. Model of workmen, pray for us. Glory of domestic life, pray for us. Guardian of virgins, pray for us. Pillar of families, pray for us. Support in difficulties, pray for us. Comfort of the afflicted, pray for us. Hope of the sick, pray for us. Patron of exiles, pray for us. Patron of the afflicted, pray for us.
pray for us. Patron of the poor, pray for us. Patron of the dying, pray for us. Terror of demons, pray for us. Protector of the Holy Church, pray for us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. He has made him Lord of his household and prince over all his possessions. Let us pray. God, who in your loving providence chose blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother, grant us the favor of having him over, uh, having him for our intercessor in heaven, whom on earth we venerate as our protector, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Well, good job. Well done. And then our discussion question so that you can make some conversation. Thank you for those that have been answering the discussion. This one you can find on page 252. And let's discuss number four because I didn't bring one up yesterday. <laughs> let's do two. St. Joseph is a representative of the Heavenly Father for us and a model to imitate in our quest for holiness, how do you think St. Joseph is an image of God, the Father, to us? How is he a model that we can imitate? And then number five, when the second person of the Holy Trinity took on human nature, that was Jesus, he had to learn things from his foster father, St. Joseph, according to the normal process of human development. Can you think Excuse me. Can you think of anything that St. Joseph would have taught Jesus? Why is it important for all children to have a father? So this one might stir up some really good discussion. <laughs> um, and if y'all have any questions about any of the practical stuff for the book, let me know. I hope that you are having a blessed Holy Week and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. God bless. See you later, my friend.